Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. A while ago, my friend Rob from the Digital Rancher YouTube channel and I made an ISS contact while we were camping together at the Yellowstone National Park, and that was pretty exciting. There is a video for that linked in the description down below. And as a result of that, I made a new friend because ham radio is all about making friends and reaching out and making contacts and talking to people. And Chaney from B Tenna sent me this box. The box isn't really that big in person, it's just kind of tall. Let's take a look, let's get it open, and let's figure out what's inside. I told you it wasn't that big. It's just the distance between the camera and the face and the hands and all the other stuff only allows for so much room. Packaging says it weighs two pounds, so I'm sure that's the packaging and the shipping material. But I gotta get it open first before I can weigh it for y'all. This guy wraps up stuff tighter than my mom wraps up Christmas presents, which is the only reason why I carry a pocket knife. Oh, look at that. It comes in a plastic carrying tube. That is awesome. Is there anything else in there? So that adds a little bit to the weight. I'm sure the antenna doesn't weigh all that much, but this, this is perfect because this is going to keep it protected while you're on the go. So the lid screws off and then out comes the antenna. And I got to get that pocket knife out again. All right, so we get we get a piece of coax with a BNC on one end and an SMA male on the other end. That'll hook up to most of your HTs. And if not, you can get yourself an adapter to hook it up to the HTs that it doesn't hook up to. We get some neat instructions here while holding the... This is the CQ DD two meter. Okay, now watch my skills as I whip my antenna out and get it all assembled, lickety split. I'm probably gonna mess it up the first few times, but practice makes perfect, right? See, I'm already making excuses. Okay, there is a yellow portion on the handle, which looks like it is some kind of shrink wrap. And what he said to do was to hold it with the antenna elements down. So I'm gonna let go and they just fell into place. And that just fell into place and that is it, it's done. That is the magic sauce. Take the front element out and fold it down. These are like uh, tent stakes. Take the middle ones and fold them up. Take the back one and fold it up. And even with all those excuses I made, this is really easy. So that's how small it folds down. Let's open that up again. Done. Done. Pretty cool. And here is a close-up of what the antenna looks like. This is pretty high quality aluminum stuff. Shrink wrap place for your hand to go or whatever mounting device you decide to use. And then there is your matching stub and your BNC connector. And as you're holding it up, that is free to rotate up or down. And it is not electrically connected directly to the other side via wire. Oh, that's a little tight, that's good. Um, but it does make an electrical connection when it connects in and then it says b -tenna. It's got its own little name tag on it. So that we know what we're doing with this antenna and where it all falls, I'm gonna use my Nano VNA, and this is in a really cool 3D printed case. And I will leave a link in the description below for the Nano VNA inside. There, this is the, the big screen version, and there is also, hi, a smaller screen version. And they make a case for both of these. And inside the case, there is room to hold all of your stuff that you need. So I need to get this thing calibrated. So there's my open, there's my short, there's my load. And with the included coax that comes with it, which will be part of the antenna system, I'll be able to hook this directly up to the Nano VNA to get a measurement. So I only need to calibrate right to the part there. I'm gonna get this thing calibrated and we will be right back. Okay, we are out here in the open and everything is in the near field. And there are two dips on this, that's interesting. So this is vertical polarization and I'm at 1.9 to 1 at, nope, it's moving. 1.3 to 1 at 134, seven. And the second dip, oh, that's why, okay. Second dip is at 152 megahertz and that's 1.1 1 .1 at 152. So it's not too bad. And then horizontal looks even better. Horizontal is 1.2 at 140.659, 1.1 
1.19 at 137.728. And just for grand, point it up at the satellites. 1.1 at 143.5 megahertz. Okay, let's do our other frequency of 70 centimeters. And this is not a 70 centimeter antenna, which is actually really good to know. It'll probably receive just fine on 70 centimeters, but this is definitely a two meter antenna. At 443, I'm at 4.6 to 1 SWR, and it's only rated as a 144 to 148. So I was asking it to do something that it wasn't designed to do, but I know you all were gonna ask. I can talk to you about SWR and show you nano VNA charts or show you that I'm taking nano VNA charts. This is a weird antenna to do a nano VNA chart on because of all of the elements in the area. I got nothing to sit it on to get it away from all the metal that's around here. Anyway, but what I really wanna do is I wanna show you this thing on a radio. So I've got my 705 and it is hooked up. I am still sitting at that metal picnic table and I have a big metal RV in front of me. So we're gonna try that and see like, what is the worst case scenario? Because also I got a metal roof above me right up there. So I've got a metal roof, a metal picnic table, a metal clad radio, a metal antenna and metal signing on my RV. So this ought to be interesting. Yep, I figured that would be pretty high. Let's get away from all this metal and get <laughs> uncomfortable. All right, we switched it up. The trailer is gone. The picnic table is gone. All I have is vegetation around me. And that's its own challenge. So let's see how that works out. There we go. And that's 1.5 in horizontal polarization. Let's do vertical. And I'm too close to the ground for this, I guess. Because that was a big change going from horizontal to vertical. Yeah, there's horizontal again. Nice. All right, now I am gonna try a local repeater. This is the KF5DFD repeater, and it is 11 miles away in that direction. So that's how I have the Yagi pointed. And we're gonna see if I can do it in that direction and then see what happens when I point it in another direction. So let's key up. And we got the repeater tail on that one. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. And I'm gonna go, that is west, I'm gonna go north. Kilo, Mike 9 Golf, silence, S east, and get it off the backside a little bit. And then we're gonna go south, which is behind me. Nothing. So I can definitely see some directionality on this. Kilo, Mike 9 Golf, testing from the Lake Arrowhead State Park campground. Kilo, Mike 9 Golf. KM9G, looking for a signal report. Anybody out there? KM9G. And I'm running at five watts. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf, doing an antenna test. Looking for a signal report. Anybody out there? Let's try it in the opposite direction again. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, KM9G, testing an antenna. Looking for a signal report. Anybody out there? I think it might be to the east from where I am. It says it's in Clay, Texas, and I'm in Wichita Falls, Texas. Oh, it does. It says it's 11.7 miles east of me, and I'm now pointed to the east. So this was off the backside. KM9G off the backside of the Yagi. KM9G off the front side of the Yagi. So I get a different response from the repeater off the front or off the back. So I'm guessing that means the signal's stronger off the front. And then if we do horizontal, KM9G testing horizontal. But that's pretty strong. KM9G testing horizontal off the backside. So we're making it into the repeater, but nobody's responding, and I just put a whole bunch of noise on the repeater. So they should have responded, but you can hear the repeater tail come back, so we're making a good connection, and you can tell when I put it north or south, I don't get the same result, and I am sitting on the ground. So that's my, that's my antenna height above ground is not above ground, <laughs> barely above ground. So you know, a foot or two above, which is a lot better than six or so below. All right, I am pretty impressed with this antenna here. Like I said, it comes with the antenna, the carrying case, and the coax in the configuration that I've got it. I'm gonna set my radio down. And some of the better features of it, obviously, are that it is collapsible, but it's collapsible and it's self-contained collapsible. Let's put the coax down. Looks like it's RG316 coax, but that's a guess. It could be 316 or 174, but it is definitely not RG8. So to put it away, fold the middle up, fold the front down, the director down, fold the reflector up,
and done. And then to redeploy, just let it all hang out and turn it upside down and you are done just like that. That is pretty awesome. I'm gonna put it back in its carrying case now. Hang on a second, let me get you some weights on this. So with the carrying case, it is one pound, 10 and a half ounces, 10.4 to split hairs. And then I have the neatly rolled coax that comes in at 1.05 ounces. And then the antenna itself is 13.4 ounces with the coax. Not bad at all. If you have ever tried to work satellites with a handheld antenna, those things get heavy really quick. I do not have an arrow antenna to compare this to. So if one of y'all has a two meter arrow only, a two meter only arrow antenna, please leave its weight in the description down below along with whatever coax it comes with. See if we can get some comparisons out there for you. These things do get heavy when you are holding them up for an entire satellite pass. And it actually was a little heavy just holding it for a little bit of repeater work that I did there. So next up, I gotta figure out some way to get this thing clamped into the jaws of Save My Life. And we'll have a video on that next time I do a satellite pass, cause I'm gonna use this thing coming up for one of those. There are links in the description down below for this satellite antenna and the coax that it comes with. And like, like I showed, you can use this for roving or for satellites or for repeater work or basically any two meter work. There is a video right up here. I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. A while ago, my friend Rob from the Digital Rancher YouTube channel and I made an ISS contact, made a satellite contact yeah, it was an ISS.